What's up guys, Jean here back with another YouTube video and this video is going to have a slightly different audio just because I'm going based off of the Rode Video Micro on the top of my camera. I am not using the lavalier mic so it's a little bit different in that sense but I finally decided to hop on the Apple Watch train so I now have an Apple Watch Series 5 Nike edition so this is going to be a quick unboxing and a little comparison video between the Apple Watch Series 5 Nike edition as well as the Fitbit Charge 3 that I used to have. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a little short snippet of the unboxing and then from there I'll dive into some of the comparisons between the Apple Watch and the Fitbit Charge 3. I know that there is a Fitbit Charge 4 coming out and I have not done full length research into that because I don't plan on buying it, but I'm gonna go ahead and give some comparisons between the Fitbit Charge 3 and the Apple Watch Series 5. Right now, I don't use the Charge 3. I gave it to my mom so that she could use it to track her steps, know when people call her and different things like that. All right, so let's go ahead and dig in right here. I have the Apple Watch Series 5. The Nike edition just because it comes with these extra faces that you get in terms of being able to show the time and different statistics that you want on your screen. Now right now I'm rocking the Fitbit um, Charge 3 so this is going to be a nice upgrade for me though this Fitbit does have Fitbit Pay so it'll be nice that this Apple Watch does have the Apple Pay feature. So let's go ahead and jump into this unboxing. Right here we can see it says the series five aluminum case with the Nike sport band and it's 40 millimeters long. So this is the nice box that it's got. And here we're just gonna pull off the tab on both sides. And then let's go ahead and put it down and unveil it. Boom. All right, let's get this little Groot out of the way there. So here you can see it has the typical watch band information and it has the bracket in it. I'll go ahead and leave that off for later. And then this is the box that actually has the Apple Watch. Sorry that I'm recording on a black on black setup, but that's the way it is right now. And if we go ahead and lift it up, bam. We can see that here it is. It says designed for athletes by Apple and Nike. So here we've got the nice little actual Apple Watch itself. And it comes in a nice neoprene or like, what are they called? Little leather thing. But it says 40 millimeters on the back. And we can go ahead and take it out. Oh, good. Here, let's just push it from the bottom. And here it is. If we carry on with the rest of the unboxing, let's go ahead and lift this tab here. You can see that it comes with the standard USB-A outlet. And then here itself is the Apple Watch charger. But pretty much that is it in terms of the actual unboxing. And I'll go ahead and do a little short comparison between this as well as the Fitbit. First, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the difference in size. So as you can see, the Apple Watch Series 5 is significantly bigger than the Fitbit Charge 3. Now, it's not that much bigger, but it, you can feel that there is a difference. Now, that's just because of the slim profile in the Charge 3 compared to the square profile of the Apple Watch. But other than that, the size is pretty much the same. In terms of aesthetics, the Apple Watch Series 5 does support colors, so in comparison with the Fitbit Charge 3, it only shows just white text on a black screen. So this, you can see pictures, you can see color, you can browse the web on this, so it's pretty cool. And in terms of the different functionalities that the different devices have. The Apple Watch of course has more because there are even certain apps that you can download onto this device. So there is kind of like a RAM and memory chip stored in this whereas the Fitbit just literally relays messages from your device to your wrist. Another cool feature of the Apple Watch is that you can use it to find your phone. So if you swipe up to get that notification bar you can see that there is that little vibrating oh. 
oh, I think I just set off my phone, but there's that little mode where you can search for where your phone is. So it will play that little typical pinging sound where you can find where your phone is. And typically you would used to only be able to do that if you have a MacBook Pro or a Ma another Apple device, sign into your Apple account and then use find my iPhone to ping your phone from there. But if you can do it now from your wrist, so you're just like, where's my phone? Click, and find the ping. And it also has the option to flash some light if you have problems finding your device. The Fitbit charge that I had was the Fitbit Charge 3 with Fitbit Pay, so it was a little bit more extra in terms of the standard Fitbit Charge 3 price, but that allowed you to use Fitbit Pay, which is kind of like Apple Wallet, and you can pay with your wrist using NFC, which is near field communication. And the one of the biggest differences though was that if you already have an Apple iPhone, it syncs all of the cards automatically rather than having to go to the Fitbit app, authorize the ability to pay. So that was just kind of the tedious piece. Right now we're gonna go ahead and compare other similarities between the Apple Watch and the Fitbit Charge 3. So one of those being that the band options are pretty much the same. You can buy a lot of band options. So this is the Nike one. So this has the standard uh, holes option, I guess you could say. So you can have that. But there's also a whole bunch of other bands like the Milanese Loop, which is the metallic band. I had that for my Fitbit Charge 3 before I decided to no longer use it. So now I have to get one for the Apple Watch. And in terms of switching out the bands, it's pretty easy, but I think I'll mainly stick with these silicone, I guess is what you call it, these silicone bands, because in terms of working out, I don't want the sweat to stay and then like all the dead skin to get caught. In terms of relaying notifications, both of them do support call and text notifications, but the Apple Watch does let you respond to your text notifications. The Fitbit does let you respond if you have an Android. So I had an iPhone and it doesn't let you respond. You can just see the message, respond to it on your phone, or just clear the notification on your device. Now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the cons about the Apple Watch compared to the Fitbit. And the biggest one that I have noticed is definitely the battery life. Now the battery life is typically about a day, I would say. Sometimes it's weird because it looks like it has long battery life and then other days it just drains like crazy. So I'm not sure if it's because of the significant number of apps that I choose to use throughout the day, but I primarily only use it to track my workouts, check up on my sleep and different things like that but the battery life is about a day whereas compared to the fitbit it would last about a week or six days now that the battery has somewhat depleted but still comparing it to six days compared to one day i always have to remember to charge it before i go to sleep in order to be able to monitor my heart rate during that time and one of the other biggest things was that fitbit allowed you to view your sleep rhythm, I guess you could say, whereas compared to the Apple Watch, you have to download third-party apps in order to be able to see it. I know that there's been rumors that they're planning on adding that whole sleep viewable feature into their new iOS Apple Watch update, but it's kind of weird that they didn't automatically have it built in. Maybe it's because their battery life was only a day, so they expected people to be charging it at night. But I think one of the biggest points of having a smart device, especially on your wrist, is to be able to tell the quality of sleep that you're having, whether or not it's the number of REM hours of sleep or the number of long deep sleep that you're getting, how many times you've awakened during the middle of the night to do your business or whatever reason. The thing about most of the apps that you can download to be able to monitor your sleep on your Apple Watch is that those cost money or it could be one of those free with in-app purchases. I have an app right now that will show how long I've slept and it gives a general gist of how long I've been awake for, how long I was in light sleep for, as well as deep sleep, but then it doesn't give you that full report card aspect on the quality of sleep over time. Whereas the Fitbit did have that for free, it wasn't included in their premium model because I know Fitbit did add the whole premium package where you can subscribe for a monthly fee of like, I think it's $10 a month. And it's not really that bad, but it's kind of just like, I just want to know the quality of sleep that I'm getting. It's not something super important, so that's why I'm not really willing to pay for it. But if anyone knows of any cool Apple Watch apps that helps monitor your sleep in a pretty aesthetically feature function way, feel free to drop that in the comments section down below because I'm trying to check one of those out. The one that I'm using right now takes a while to load. The report takes forever to load on my Apple Watch too but I don't know if that's just because the app that I'm using is kind of outdated. It looks kind of old, 
but I think it's called Sleep Tracker. And yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching my little quick unboxing on the Apple Watch Series 5, as well as the comparisons between the Fitbit Charge 3 and the Apple Watch Series 5. I hope you guys found it useful and somewhat interesting. If you guys liked the video, feel free to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for further content, and I'll see you guys later.